for the session on enlivening legal education, balancing the head and the heart. The session will explore the delicate equilibrium between intellectual rigor and empathetic understanding, fostering a holistic approach to legal learning that engages both the mind and the heart. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to enact uh, interviewing a survivor of domestic violence. One of you would be playing the survivor and the other would be playing the lawyer. Okay? Uh, we will give the survivor a series of facts which is present there on the sheet of paper. I hope my handwriting is not too bad. Um, and after that, if time permits it, we follow a dis we follow by a discussion of what information is needed and how much information we will be able to obtain from this. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Uh, aapka naam? Uh, my name is Sheetal. Sheetal. Ji, Sheetal, please tell me about you and the thing which has happened with you. Okay, so it's all about uh, after my marriage, that marriage my, husband, my father has given me certificates of cash for my life in my in those family that supports me. Okay. Uh, that money they have given you or in-laws or husband? To me only. To you. Okay. Then? Uh, then after some time I start getting taunts for that same money that property they have given to me because he to make a car and of course of a property that belongs to me. But it's on my name they start getting taunts for, for the same thing that they have given to me and not to them. And I'm now in there. Why? And I've done their property, so they are asking for their right over my property. Uh, in law, we call it Stridhan. Yes. So, uh, I don't know if you know it or not, but it is your Stridhan. Uh, have ever your husband or any in-law raised their hand on you? Uh, no, not. Uh, so, only verbal they have, uh, you know, yes. uh, tortured you or abused you because uh, we have to know they tortured you or abused you or both verbally abuse you can say okay so uh, who all husband in-laws everybody yeah so uh, what you want then i'll tell you the remedies first you tell me what you want you want to stay with the family or you want to take demos or you just want to solve this matter? I just came to you to ask a remedy from you that See, in uh, the society of Indian family, it is very difficult for a woman to get divorced easily. It is very difficult for a woman to after survive after a divorcing woman. So, it's so many uh, questions around me for my survival to get divorced and even separate from my husband. So, I just get remedy that how I can get remedy even with you know, to be legal respectful even after the divorce or with the family with respect. How many years of marriage? We can stop here. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so there is a time, uh, we just got a reminder to uh, finish fast. Uh, this could have continued. Now, what one would have done ideally in a classroom situation is to open this up from multiple lenses. Uh, one lens could be looking at patriarchal elements that seep in in the way we interview. So the kind of questions asked, the kind of prompts given, and does it have a patriarchal lens or not uh, is one. Uh, does it come from certain uh, common beliefs which need to be challenged could be another one. Uh, the other processing that would be done would be regarding the interviewing skills by themselves. Uh, so were you empathetic? Uh, did you follow a proper sequence? Did you extract all the information that was required to be extracted or did you miss out on something? Did you sound judgmental? Uh, were you allowing the person to choose uh, or did you impose your opinion uh, on them? These are some lenses that we could uh, look at. So in this particular situation, if we just look at the domestic incident report, that's a very good tool given in the act itself, which lays down all the information that I need to gather. So a comparative could have been, what is the list
list of questions that I have asked, what is the information that I have gathered and how much of it got left out or was everything captured beautifully or not. So in the same sequence, we are looking at information, the information about the domestic incident report. Uh, we are looking at perspective because we are looking at uh, everything from the patriarchal uh, lens and we are looking at uh, simultaneously the skill of interviewing. So in, a, in the same se uh, session, we have captured the perspective, the skill, the information uh, together. Uh, is after this, we could have uh, moved into an exercise that, okay, this is the fact situation. Uh, now, what are the remedies that are possible? And if we look at certain sections in the Domestic Violence Act, there are these many remedies that are possible. Asking the students to read these sections and decide which of these remedies, based on the fact situation, are possible in this particular case and then looking at that from that lens. So this would have completed a sequence which we are uh, brushing through because of lack of uh, time. Just to, uh, uh, so just to look at what are, what, what are things that we are uh, looking at. Uh, we, we are looking at some principles that we have to look at self-awareness, we have to look at experience, we have to look at reflection. So if we look at the first uh, element that we did, uh, first element which sort of uses a contradiction, the five women that I love and popular perception. When I contradict, when I engage with this contradict, it forces, what contradiction, it forces me to take a stand, what are my values? Uh, where do I stand vis-a-vis -vis norms of patriarchy? Uh, am I somebody who is interested in change or not? So these are questions that one engages with uh, in, in the process. Um, focus on how to learn rather than teach the law. So we could have done a PowerPoint, section 3, this is the definition, uh, this is the case law, etc, etc. But what we did is to raise curiosity and then guide reading uh, so that the person is also understanding how do I read, what is an explanation, how do I dissect something, how do I apply something I read to a fact and this, the, this can be made fairly complex. We have used a very simple option because it was only 45 minutes but the more technical you make uh, your questions or your examples, the nuances of how to read become more uh, enhanced. Uh, so we focus on that. Uh, ensure that attitude, perspective, information and skills are all integrated in a holistic manner which is what I spoke of uh, just now. Uh, facts and principles must be related with principles and expectations. Again, the, the way we did the first thing that, oh, laws are misused. But then, okay, laws are misused, but there are these five women who are facing all this. Uh, so constantly looking at uh, at the counter a narrative, constantly looking at how am I responding? So if people say, okay, this is misused, where, where are my beliefs coming from? What are my insecurities? Looking at uh, those things together. Uh, some of the other principles, law is not a standalone subject, it operates in a context. Uh, this discourse can be made further complicated by critiquing the PWDBA by itself. If we look at the remedies, it talks of remedies which are not possible in a rural scenario. And therefore, the discussion on how the lawmakers designs, and it's a very beautiful act, we use it very extensively, but it is useful for only a certain percentage of women living in urban areas where some of the remedies are possible. In a rural scenario where you cannot have segregated housing, the remedy of having to stay with with, with certain section dedicated for the women, it does not work. So many of these remedies are actually very good on paper, but not uh, good, good, good in practice. It does not take into account several kinds of relationships uh, which women are in uh, and uh, does not respond to their needs. It does not look at women who are disabled and any special needs that they may have in world in relationships, etc. Uh, those are nuances that we bring in. Uh, accompaniment and mentoring is important for equipping a person with uh, competence. I have taught on multiple campuses and um, 
Uh, I insist a lot on uh, on reviews. So any project that is there goes through three reviews, and if you are wonderful on those three reviews, you get good marks. But irrespective, the feedback that I receive is this is from third, fourth, fifth year students. Ma'am, आप पहले हो जिसने feedback दिया है अभी तक तो हमको केवल marks मिलते थे. So traveling with a person uh, in the journey as they are uh, growing, uh, I think is very uh, important. Uh, need to build a person's identity as someone who is committed to the legal process and has taken it. I've had uh, Facebook uh, uh, Facebook uh, uh, sharings uh, from somebody who's uh, a student in constitutional law uh, and uh, uh, very sexist, very casteist, very uh, hateful messages there. And uh, I sort of engaged with the person, and ultimately it was that I am a very good constitutional law student. I've got very good marks, which means I know my 14, 15, 16 very well. Uh, but as a person, as a human being, uh, my identity uh, of being an upper caste, privileged, elite college student has not changed at all. I remain an upper caste, elite male uh, student, uh, and therefore. Teaching constitutional law in a manner where this is not challenged, where the core does not change, is only half the work because if the constitutional values have to be practiced, I need to challenge who I am. And who I am is a, is a product of multiple years of uh, training in different institutions. Uh, different people learn differently. And therefore, different learning styles must be incorporated into learning designs. Uh, a class which is heavily uh, focused on information dissemination can prove uh, counterproductive for somebody who doesn't learn in that method. <coughs> we have different uh, ways of learning. Some people are more experiential, some people are more uh, reflective. Uh, I, I remember I had a class uh, which had two categories of students and very vocal. Uh, that class, one category of students wanted a PowerPoint presentation so exhaustive that they don't have to make notes, they can reproduce that in the, in the, uh, in the exam. So they kept saying that you just give pointers, there's not enough content in the PowerPoint. There was another category of student who said your PowerPoint is so heavily loaded that we lose track, can you reduce the content? Uh, the option that I saw is, I said, okay, some of you just face like that, you know, against the, this thing, so that you don't have to look at the at the PowerPoint, and the rest who want can look at whatever is, uh, is there. So balancing these kind of competing needs uh, becomes uh, important. Uh, create opportunities for experiential learning. I think a lot of things cannot be taught by, by lectures. So, so the skills cannot be taught by lectures. I have taught courses where the work that the students had done was actually used for filing, filing a public interest litigation. Now any amount of lecturing on what a PIL drafting should look like cannot equate this experience where they sat with rural people, went through RTI applications, collected all the information. So the, they, they worked through a file from interviewing to creating the file to drafting the PIL which more or less was ready to be filed. So, so, so that becomes very uh, important. Uh, uh, not, not to spoon feed, I think that's a basic that we uh, look at. Uh, and therefore a class must have an equal amount of emphasis on building identity, on perspective, on information and, and on skills. A possible example of, uh, of a domestic violence session could have information about which court can handle the case, uh, it could have the nature of the offence, it could have uh, that the domestic violence by itself is not a private matter, it's something that belongs to the public space. It could have evidence related aspects because usually we study evidence separately, uh, family law separately and the connect between the two is left for the students to uh, come up with. Uh, understanding the ingredients of section 498A and whether dowry demand is an essential component or not. The politics of overuse of uh, section 498A because the understanding is that it's been misused which is not true for, as practitioner I know that that's not true. Uh, skills in conciliation, how does one handle a victim, uh, what are the skills of drafting an FIR or a DIR whatever the situation may be. Uh, this, this, this could look like a possible holistic uh, session 
I think there's less time, so I'll close here. But if there are any questions, we can look at that.